because if one thing's going to make somebody feel bad, it's if 297 people get cards and one doesn't. Blake and I were introduced by my uncle. Um, I, had, I had finished a job I had been doing as a humanitarian worker, and my uncle said to me, why don't you come and spend the summer in San Francisco? I think you're going to have a great time out here. It had come to him kind of like a eureka moment. Yeah. Maybe he should put the two of us together. But he did it in a really subtle yeah. way. He threw this dinner party. We sat next to each other. It was Clay and I and um, two or three teenagers at the table. And somehow this taco stand came up. And as Clay sat kind of unaware, the other four of us kind of did a, oh, I love Gordo. And we just started talking about these amazing burritos and tacos. And she was saying, oh, you, what, are you, what are you guys talking about? And that was, I guess, when I spitted major game. I said, oh, give me your phone number. I'll take you there next, next Tuesday when I'm back from the field. But then when I actually showed up for oh, yeah, right. the taco stand. She came to my door and I opened it and just had this, oh, dear goodness <laughs> moment like I can't take her out for a three dollar burrito right now so I um kind of reoriented the plan and we walked down to this to this cafe Doña Tomas and had a really lovely like four hour um, nice meal instead. We were actually for most of the first year of our relationship we were long distance I was in New York and Blake was in Santa Cruz California so um we had to kind of make a decision pretty early on that our relationship was serious. I'd spent a lot of the previous 10 years in a really small cabin in deep inside a forest in Mendocino County, California. Somebody from the Upper West Side of Manhattan kind of happening into my life seemed very unsuspected. And um, the more that we got to know each other, I think the more we saw that a lot of the things that separated us and made us di different felt very much on the surface and what was underneath felt felt very similar and, and, and really compatible. Blake and I had talked about getting married before he proposed because Blake had been offered a professorship in London. And when, when it became clear that Blake was going to move to London, we had to have a conversation about whether I was going to move to London as well. And we went on a trip to London and we got back and there was this package and I saw that it was from Pave, a jeweler that I really like in San Francisco, and Blake like snatched it out of my hands. Um, but Blake sometimes gets me little gifts, so it, it didn't seem that remarkable. Then he mentioned he wanted to take a walk on the promenade, um, and somehow that day I was coming home from school, I had a sort of eureka moment. I was like, oh my god, I think that Blake is going to propose today. And because of that, when I got to the promenade, I was so nervous. Um, and it was a really cold night and we walked back and forth a couple of times on the promenade and I began to think, oh, I guess probably I was wrong. Um, and I, I, I was just working up the nerve. <laughs> <laughs> I said to Blake, I'm really cold. Um, maybe we should go and get dinner. And he was like, wait, before we leave, there's something I want to ask you. And then I was like, oh my God, he really is going to propose. And then I, he started to do it and I like, I had worked myself up so much because yeah. I was waiting that when he started, I was like, no. <laughs> like, well, wait, wait, I believe her exact words were, yes, but you have to ask me again in five minutes when I can hear you. 